Hey, how you doing? Anthony Ferrara here at Create Sci-Fi. Today I'm very excited. Today we're going to create a sci-fi set for a dollar. <laughs> I swear. So I did this a lot on my uh, show, Galactic Galaxy, right? So my main heavy, the Dark Czar, uh, Jeff Lewis from the Guild. This whole set was the chair. And then um, with my IF3 Warriors, all I did was a chair, an office chair, and I just put a joystick on it. So it was like from one extreme to the other. But it's a really great way to do sci-fi on a budget. I, I went to my local Goodwill and I got the chair for a dollar. It was blue tag, whatever day it was. But otherwise it would have been like $6. So I'm going to take um, some Greeblies, all right, from the dollar store. I got this cheap lightsaber, so I think this will be how we shoot and then you know we always say like oh i gotta get in shape and you buy a bunch of junk these right so i save all this stuff and i think this is going to be a great maybe like some kind of thruster or control you just want to give the actor stuff to play with right so i'm going to do the arms probably with those controllers get rid of all of this um upholstery and then i have some EVA floor mat foam, right? I picked this one because it has this texture. So we're gonna use that. And you know, uh, I mean, if we're gonna nit nitpick, <laughs> probably this chair at cost, if I didn't have the dollar special, it would've been like five bucks. Foam, probably like 15 bucks. Dollar store, left, you know, probably like 20, $25, right? But a dollar chair. Right, so let's get to building. All right, I'm gonna dig right in with my knife and start pulling this apart, and I'm not gonna lie, this thing smells disgusting. <laughs> it was barely worth a dollar, but it's a great donor piece. So I'm just sort of getting familiar with this thing, ripping it apart. I mean, yeah, I'm tearing things apart, but you also start to see how it's put together, and you start to, you know, start to think about what you're gonna do with it, right? So now finally I realize, okay, I need to take this apart, so I'm gonna take the back part off but it's nice that that's made out of wood you know it's not any kind of like particle cardboard or anything so I take that off I'm gonna clean that up better but you know that's a good piece a good solid foundation piece just gotta spin it around so you can think <laughs> And now I'm taking off these armrests because uh, these armrests are going to be the seat of whatever I build on top of this. So I make sure to not lose those screws. And now I can get onto the bench. So now the first thing I'm gonna do is, is do the final cleanup on these pieces. These are kind of gonna be like my core pieces aside from the seat. So most of this work I can now do at the bench. And now there's just all this grossness in here. So luckily <laughs> you guys aren't smelling this. But once I, you know, you want to get dirty so that you can work clean, right? It's like, you just want to do this step first, then I vacuum, clean everything up. So now look, that's nice and clean on the bench. You got your donor pieces. So first thing I got to do is get rid of uh, some staples and find the center point, right? We're always trying to find the center point. So I find the center point and I'm gonna build from this. So now I wanna come up with some kind of shape so that it doesn't look like an office chair, right? An office chair is a very common thing and the silhouette is embedded in our head. Um, so I kind of look at the material I have to deal with and I decide I'm gonna do like this crown. So I'm just gonna go out back and I'm gonna cut this out with uh, the jigsaw. Very simple pattern, but again, you just wanna break up that silhouette. And you know, already I'm, I'm happy with that, right? We're off to a good start. So now I wanna extend these arms and then this is where we're gonna add our controllers. We're, we wanna have something to shoot and we wanna have something to steer, right? Always when you have like the, the it could be a cockpit of a starship or a, a big spaceship, you gotta steer a little, you gotta shoot a little, you're good to go. So now I've extended these as far as I can. I'm gonna cut out two of them and now, uh, we're when I go wood to wood, I like to use wood glue, but lots of times when you're building like this for props, 
um, for film and series, you, you don't have a lot of time. So I use the wood glue and then I just do a perimeter of hot glue so that I can move along. Ideally with the wood glue, you let that dry overnight and once that dries, it's not going anywhere. So now I have this piece um, from the exercise bands and I have some dowels and I just gotta figure out, again, square peg, round hole. We talk about that a lot on this channel. So now these don't quite fit, so I'm gonna take my Dremel tool and I'm just going to trim that down a little kind of like sharpening a pencil and just gonna get a nice tight fit I leave it proud because I'm not sure how long I want this to be yet so now I take apart the guts of this dollar lightsaber and actually you know it's always the simple that complicates off camera I didn't want to bother with it but the thing broke apart so I had to super glue it back together which is fine because um, it's really not like a hero piece or you know it's not like a blast or anything it's just a, a, a little uh, greebly right you just want the actor to have something realistic to grab onto and then when the camera catches it it'll just read as real so now I'm just beefing this up with super glue um, I overbuild and kicker is your friend when you're doing these kind of builds so you can just keep moving on um, you put super glue you use that kicker since it sets instantly you can keep going so now I start to file down where um, this is proud coming out of the handle now I'm just gonna take the Dremel tool again and you're just gonna make everything uniform right you're always putting the square peg in the round hole and then we're covering it up with paint and glue and Bondo and whatever and now that looks like one piece, right? So now we have uh, something like a throttle. So now I ran into the kitchen and this is the cap off my iced tea container. Gotta have a knob, right? Keep it simple. The, the drink caps are nice because they have the ridge on them. So I just put a little hot glue uh, in there, add a screw, and I'm gonna set this aside for later. And when I paint things, I'll throw that into the mix, but it's, it's done. So now again, center point, always trying to find the center point. You don't want things all crazy all over the place. So now I'm just going to drill a hole um, for these controllers to go in. Now, I don't get crazy with the mechanism, but actors, you know, you wanna give them something to play with right so I did a very minimal thing here I didn't want to get too crazy with gears and levers and pulleys and oh this is a new thing so I'm cleaning up with the shop vac since I have my new shop I'm going to incorporate that in all my videos so that I'll do it <laughs> so keep your shop clean all right, so now I'm uh, prepping these, I'm sanding them to clean it all down and uniform it and then uh, get it ready for paint. With handles and grips, you know, I'm on this kick lately, I love putting the Plasti Dip on there. Um, we're gonna hit the whole chair with Plasti Dip, but I like putting on my handle grips because I like that, that texture. All right, so now with this diamond foam, I'm going to uh, cut out pieces to start um, putting a, a, a treatment, a mask on top of our pieces that we built, right? It's kind of like making a prop, even though it's a set piece, it's sort of a set piece slash prop. And uh, we're going to give this a nicer profile, the texture, always about light play. So that fits, do a test fit, that looks good. And so now I'm going to uh, mark where that hole is because now I need to make a hole in the foam so that it can receive the controller. And what I do is I make it a little bit larger and I'll put a smaller piece of foam in there. And again, you know, you're just adding these little details um, and they just add value, right? All you gotta do is cut a circle in the foam um, I use uh, the X-Acto knife for this. And, you know, what I'm trying to get across here is that, you know, I could have just jammed um, the post through there, but now by just adding this one extra element, again, these, these things you'll never see, but subtextually you, you, you'll pick them up, right? So when that goes in there, it's just gonna wiggle a little, give the actors a little something to play with. So now I'm going to do a basic mechanism, right? So what I decide to do is I'm going to screw a piece of foam into the bottom of this, right? And I'm gonna take it apart in a second because I realize <laughs> I need to thread the needle. So um, taking that apart, right? So it needs to be the post through and then glue that on, right? So then I screw it to the bottom and now, you know, it just moves a little, that's all you need. And you need to warn the actors, like, hey, don't go crazy with this, but you can move it because they're gonna wanna move it, so you might as well have that set up. So I overbuild this because actors will destroy things. And um, now it has a little bit of play 
and I'm gonna put in this collar, this insert piece here. And you know, it's a different foam. It's set down a little. This will move with the handle and it just makes it more realistic. And you know, that takes two minutes to do that. So I cut that out and foam is very easy to work with. So I know I don't have to be exact in my fit. Just glue it down and while it's drying, you could just work it in there. And you see there? Nice, almost like a gear shifter in a car. Okay, so now I have these pieces, always testing, testing, because if it's gonna break, you want it to break now. So now we're gonna put an edge um, on this. Always when you're cutting foam, sharpen the knife. I keep a, a sharpening stone handy. Some people have um, like a chef knife sharpener. And we're just gonna cut these strips um, so we can go around and, and face this. I tried to cut it so it would work with one piece. It was a little short, but like I said, with the foam, you can stretch it. So with this, I'm just putting a bead of super glue, and then you're gonna stretch the foam and uh, place it over the sides. And what I like to do, I, I mentioned this earlier, is just use the kicker, right? Just the assemble line, just keep moving on. Make sure you get this straight. And because it's one piece of foam, it, it kind of helps to make this look uh, more like a factory built piece, right? Once it's painted and we're not staring directly at it. I, I talk about this a lot, like misdirection, right? You, you want it to be misdirecting in that you don't think about it because it's cockamamie, but it doesn't have to be perfect when it's this type of piece. It just needs to have the right silhouette, the right paint. So now I'm just um, fixing up that crease there. Boop, little spray. <laughs> so that looks good. So now I'm gonna plastic dip the whole thing. Whenever you're painting uh, the foam, you wanna put a layer of the plastic dip first. All right, so I don't have enough of that diamond foam, but I do have this blue textured foam. And um, this is pretty straightforward. So I don't, you know, I, I could have drawn out the template. You know, there's a lot of things I could have done, but, I decided, you know, this is the seat. You're, it's gonna be covered up by the actor most of the time. So I just glued it down, put my big butt on there. Yeah. And then um, I just cut around it with a knife. So now I just went and um, did a second pass with the hot glue around the edges. And I just taped that down with painter's tape and set that aside while I moved on. Okay, so now we're gonna work on that back panel that we cut earlier. First thing I'm gonna do is just add this trim. I'm not adding it for any real reason, just trying to build elements, right? You don't wanna overdo it, but I wanna put this lip on here because once we paint it it'll look uh, like metal and it'll look like there's a strip of metal around the whole thing so you get an idea there and then also because it's raised up a little there'll be some nice play with that um, so now the the pieces of, of diamond foam that I have remaining I'm going to make some kind of pattern on the back so the first thing I'm going to do is just start riffing off of, of this little cut that I have there so now I make like a heart shape and I'm taking care to make a clean cut because what I'll do is I'll just separate this piece about an inch and what that'll help me do is it'll instead of covering the whole thing in a solid sheet um, then it would get lost and you wouldn't really think about it. By creating this pattern um, adds value. Again, center line, always searching for the center line. <laughs> that would be the name of my autobiography, searching for the center line. And now, you know, we have this heart. So um, put that down with the hot glue and that was pretty simple. So now I have these pieces that I cut off and you know, I'm just gonna position them. And with this, you know, I'm just eyeballing it. I put the ruler there uh, just to make sure that it's relatively straight. And you know, if it looks straight, it is straight, right? So hot glue that down and this is coming out really nice. So now um, I just gotta fill in this little gap and I barely have enough foam. So now it's like you start getting clever and yeah, that worked out good. And it, it's one of those things where I didn't have a plan for that and that, that really, really came out nice. So now um, I have more of this blue foam and I wanna put strips on the back just to give it a little visual interest. With the, with the heat, you um, can pre-bend the foam and then it gets rid of the fuzzies. So uh, again, the center line. <laughs> and what I did off camera is I put the top piece and the bottom piece first and then the two middle pieces you space them out and then it's easier to sort of get a more uniform look. 
press that down. Hot glue and the wood and the foam really work well together. There's the back and the front or the front and the back, depending how you're thinking about it. And now you guessed it, I'm gonna hit this all with a coat of Plasti Dip. All right, so went to bed. There's everything drying overnight. After the plastic dip dried, I hit it with a, a can of just flat black primer. So now um, we're going to do a dry brushing on the whole thing. So I have this metallic. The dry brushes, you just get most of the paint off of the brush and you just lightly dust it, just kiss the whole thing. So what you're doing is you're giving it a worn metal look. Um, so probably a little more than dry brushing uh, 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 then it's probably more of like a, a, a light brushing and especially those diamonds you really want to hit those high points right so i do both of those now on the back and for this i want to keep those channels those separations i want to keep those black just because i think it'll really make this piece pop and it'll make it seem you know something interesting rather than just an office chair right so now i'm going to seal this all in with a clear coat and i'm going to do a wash just like with a prop right so i got some burnt sienna a little bit of black and we're just going to really water this down and i'm just going to slather this all over the whole chair and then you wipe that off with a paper towel just looking for those happy accidents you wipe you know 95 percent of it off but in some places you just can't get it out and that's what you want and then you think well all right in this little area here where the where the um, controller is probably dirt will get stuck in there so i put a little heavier coat in there and then once you uh, wipe that all off it's just very subtle but very very convincing so i do the back the same thing on the front um with this i i try not to go too heavy because um it's wood, so the paint will soak into the wood as opposed to the foam, which it wipes off pretty easily. And you know, same thing, rinse and repeat. And the, with this, you just wanna be careful to not go overboard, right? The trick is not the, the process or the technique, the trick is when to stop. So I go in these gaps, and I find the more um, sort of rough I am with it, the better result I get. So now again, we're gonna seal that wood clear. We keep doing the clear so that everything doesn't mush together. So now I have that plastic dip um, that I didn't cover with primer on these controllers, because um, you know you can't tell from the video, but this is rubberized, right? So it's a nice, it's a nice uh, feel for the actors and it, and it just makes it seem more realistic. So just to give these a little life, I got some rub and buff and I'm just gonna put a little bit of rub and buff on my finger. And you gotta be careful with this because you don't, if you clump it, it's there forever. And you just really delicately go over the high points. And you know, broken record, I keep saying this, it's, it just catches light, right? That's what you wanna do, catch light. So in your film or your series or your photos, whatever you're doing, you know, the, the chair is not the main uh, focus. So when your character is doing whatever they're doing, just these little subtle edges that'll catch light will just help to enhance your, your overall presentation. And here's the beauty shots. It's tough to get this all in camera. <laughs> I like to do all white, but you know, I did the best I could and there you see how how cruddy that is in, in a most beautiful way And it's got a metallic look and you know on set those casters would not be on there and um, You wouldn't really be seeing the bottom of that. So it wouldn't look like an office chair. You just see the top Yeah, I'm happy with that Whoa, look at this thing. I can't even fit in the frame Wow so one thing I did do off camera is I lowered this because that was riding a little too high, but you're always making adjustments. So this is how we fire. This is how we um, will, I guess, throttle, thrust, steer. You know, you leave that up to the actors. And I'm glad you're seeing it like this with the, with the legs cut off. You definitely would want to remove the casters because you don't want the actors scooting around subconsciously. That'll read office chair. Um, and sometimes I even lock it in place so they can't swivel. Well, I guess we should fire it up. <laughs> Whoa! Welcome to my spaceship. Let's see what this has got. 
Whoa! Bogey at three o'clock. Whoa! <laughs> Got a lot of firepower. <laughs> Let's ease her down. Throttle down. Autopilot. Well, as always, I hope you found this video useful. Please like, share, subscribe, leave a comment. I love to read the comments. Be sure to check out our merch shop, pick up a hat, pick up a shirt that really helps the channel. And remember, I'm just here to help make sci-fi. <laughs> Let's go!